Hello my dear aspirants welcome to the session it's me alikya today we are going to discuss about the fourth chapter maths from 6th class ncert geography in the previous chapter we learnt about the advantages of a globe globe can be used to study the earth as a whole but when we want to study about a specific part of the earth like countries states districts towns and villages we use maps firstly let's know what is meant by map we can say a map is a representation or a drawing of the earth's surface or a part of it drawn on a flat surface here flat surface means may be a sheet of paper this representation process is done on a paper according to a scale maps provide more information than a globe maps are of three types they are physical maps political maps and thematic maps let's discuss in detail about the three types of maps first one is physical map in physical map the natural features of the earth are shown natural features like plains plateaus rivers oceans and so on are shown in this map here we can see the picture of the physical map and whatever the natural features we already discussed like rivers mountains and all is clearly marked in this map now let's discuss about the second type of maps that is political maps in the political maps all the cities towns villages and countries and states along with their boundaries are marked in the picture also i mean in the map also we can see all the different states and union territories and their capitals are marked with their boundaries see here here is andhra pradesh and at the same time amravati is marked so in the same way all the different states and union territories and their capitals along with their boundaries is marked in the map and this we can say as political map third type of maps or thematic maps here the name team itself indicates it is providing particular information these type of maps include specific information such as road maps rainfall maps and the maps which is showing the distribution of forests industries and so on we can say as thematic map here in the map we can see it is totally focused on the minerals that are present in different states of india in this slide we can see two maps in the first map we can see all the world heritage cultural and national sites present in different places in india and the second map totally focused on the rivers and dams all over india we can also see different symbols or indicated to identify the international boundary rivers and dams in the map there are three components of maps they are distance direction and symbol let's discuss in detail about the three components of maps first one is distance we can say maps are the drawings which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper in simple we can say maps are drawn to reduced scales it means in reality area will be in kilometers but it is shown in centimeters in the map means in reality the area will be in kilometers as i said but when coming to the map it is shown in centimeters this is what we can say the maps are drawn to reduced scales in reality the distance on the ground is large but to show that large distance on the paper the distance should be reduced and for this purpose we need a scale here comes the question what is meant by scale scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map let's discuss with an example suppose the actual distance between your school and home is 40 km but we show in map as 5 cm it means the scale is as i said earlier the scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map here 
actual distance is 40 kilometers in the map we shown as 5 centimeters so 40 by 5 that is 8 kilometers we can say here the scale is 1 centimeter equals to 8 kilometer if we know the scale we can calculate the distance between any two places on the map and this is how we find the scale we are using two scales in the map based on the requirement one is small scale map and the second one is large scale map here comes the question when we use small scale and when we use large scale for suppose when large areas like continents or countries are to be shown on the paper then we use this small scale let me explain with an example if 500 kilometer on the ground is shown as 5 centimeters on the map then it is called as small scale map it means in reality it is 500 kilometers but in the map we are showing just 5 centimeters so we can say this as small scale map now let's discuss what is meant by large scale map when a small area like your village or town is to be shown on the paper then we use this large scale map here 500 meters on the ground is shown as 5 centimeters on the map it is called large scale map finally we can conclude that the large scale map gives more information than the small scale map the reason is in the large scale map we can see every minute point is clearly identified and mentioned so we can say this large scale map gives more information than the small scale maps now let's discuss the second component of a map that is direction in the maps we can see an arrow that is marked with letter n at the right corner of the map it indicates north direction and we can call it as north line in the figure we can see the compass marked with north and south direction if we know one direction that is north then we can find the other directions like south east and west directions north east south and west are called cardinal points along with these directions we are having four intermediate directions and they are northeast southeast southwest and northwest so these are called the intermediate directions with the help of these intermediate directions we can locate any place accurately see in the picture also we can see for cardinal directions and also for intermediate directions and with this intermediate directions as i said we can locate any place more accurately the most important and third component of the map is symbols we know it is impossible to draw the actual shape and size of the buildings roads bridges railway lines and so on on the map and as we know it is impossible these are indicated using certain letters shades colors pictures and lines so the reason is in clear we can say for suppose let's consider a water body so for indicating a water body we use blue color so it means for indicating a water body we are using a color in this way we are using symbols colors and all to represent a particular thing maps have a universal language and that can be understood by all and these are called the conventional symbols in the picture we can see all the symbols used to indicate the railway line roads boundaries and the water bodies such as river tank canal and so on so temple church post office police station settlement graveyard tree and so on all the places we are using some symbols to indicate so in railway lane we can see this symbol is used for broad gauge and for meter gauge this symbol is used and for railway station we use this symbol in the same way for metal roads we are using this symbol and for unmetal roads we are using this symbol finally we can see these are all the 
conventional symbols we used to indicate different places rivers and roads and so on we can say and remember these are the symbols we are using in the map to indicate a particular places and also the rivers and all the things various colors are used for indicating like blue color is used for indicating the water body and yellow for plateaus and brown for mountains in the picture we can see like a temple church mosque and trees and here is the railway station and uh, roads and unmetal roads school uh, i mean in this way we are using the conventional symbols to indicate as we already discussed so here also we can see an arrow and marked with letter n so it indicates the north direction and this we can say as north line as i already said if we know one direction we can estimate the other directions what is meant by a sketch a sketch is a drawing mainly based on the memory and spot observation we can say it is just a rough drawing of a place or an area to tell where a particular place is located with respect to other places we can also say that it is just a rough drawing drawn without the scale it means here we are not considering any scale for suppose Uh, we went to some place and we saw some a temple or uh, a village or anything else and we are impressed with that so because of that imagination we would be presenting that on the paper that we can say as a sketch i mean it is just based on the memory and the observation what we did while observing the place that can be presented on the paper and that can be known as a sketch map here no any scale is considered what is meant by a plan drawing of a small area on a large scale is called as plan in simple we can say representing a small area on a large scale is called plan for suppose if we have to construct a house or a building or a mall it is firstly represented on a paper we can say that every idea or every information we need to complete the construction is represented or included in this plan for suppose if we have to construct a house so where particular room should be where the kitchen should be so everything is mentioned in the plan and we can say large scale maps give lot of information for more educational information please subscribe alekia education videos and if you have any doubts comment in the comment section